Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Recompete webinar. Uh, uh, my name is Leopold Spohn Giller, and I am a program manager on the Recompete team. Uh, today, we are going to take you through some of the basics of applying uh, to this Phase 1 NOFO. Uh, we hope uh, this webinar will be helpful to you and the communities you serve as you start to use some of our systems and uh, go through the required documents for this program. So let's jump right in. At the very top, I just wanted to remind folks that we are available to you if you are struggling as you apply to this program. Um, in particular, as we go through our EDGE system today, I want to flag that there is an email uh, that you can email uh, with any questions about our EDGE system, grantshdsupport at eda.gov. And you can also always uh, email us at recompete at eda.gov. And then we also have a number of EDA uh, EDGE reference guides that are available. Like someone is not on mute. Okay, great. So please take advantage of these. Just want to remind folks on the call about the structure of this program. So this is a two-phase competition. The first phase is open right now, and the second phase will launch uh, this winter. So in phase one, uh, applicants have the option to apply for a strategy development grant, for recompete plan approval, or both. So our strategy development grant provides uh, planning dollars for folks who want to uh, further develop uh, their strategy for reducing the prime age employment gap in their community. We plan on awarding about $6 million to $12 million in strategy development grants. Um, these awards will be approximately $50,000 to $500,000 apiece. And then there's a recompete plan approval where you can apply uh, to receive eligibility for applying to phase two. So if you want to apply for phase two, where we will award uh, three to eight uh, four to eight uh, awards uh, consisting of three to eight complementary projects per region, full investment on average of 20 to 50 million, uh, you need to apply for recompete plan approval in phase one. As a reminder, uh, folks, you don't have to choose between the two. You can apply for a planning grant. You could apply for a recompete plan approval. Uh, you could apply for both. Go to the next slide here. So here are some guidelines for those of you who are still thinking through which to apply to. Uh, for those of you who might uh, consider a strategy development grant, uh, you might say to yourself, our region has relevant ideas, leaders, and or assets, but we need to do significantly more uh, coordination and planning to be ready for implementation funding. We do not wish to apply for implementation funding under the upcoming NOFO. So this is for those folks who think that they will only apply to a strategy development grant and do not want to be eligible for phase two at this time. If you're only applying for recompete plan approval, you might say to yourself, our region is ready to apply for implementation funding and does not need additional resources to put together a strong phase two application. And if you plan on applying for both, you might say to yourself, our region has an understanding of how to address low prime age employment and is close to being ready to apply for implementation funding but additional resources would strengthen our coordination planning and phase two application development. So we have this visual here to help folks understand the process that we're going through for this program. As you can see uh, in phase one, which is open right now, one can apply for a strategy development grant, which comes with a dollar award, or recompete plan approval, which is the sort of key to getting to phase two. So if you apply for strategy development grant, you will potentially be selected for an award. Um, however, only by, selected, by applying for recompete plan approval will you become potentially eligible to apply for a phase two award. And as a reminder for everyone on the call, the deadline for phase one for either application is October 5th, 2023. So today we're gonna to take you through the steps that you might go through um, in our EDGE system uh, in applying for Recompete, and then we're gonna talk through the uh, required and additional documents that go into it. So step zero before uh, you get into EDGE or anything is deciding if this is the right opportunity for you. Um, so 
we know that there's a lot of different uh, opportunities out there, so we want you to feel good about applying. Um, one thing that you need to make sure before you decide to apply is whether you are an eligible entity. Uh, there's a list of eligible entities on our website, and we will send these slides out to everyone on this call, so don't worry about that. Are you located in or connected to an eligible area? So this program is based on prime age employment rates and median income requirements provided by Congress. So please make sure to go to our website and we will provide, and, and, that, and there you will find a map that will help you determine if you are in an eligible geography. And then finally, uh, you need to determine if you're gonna apply for a strategy development grant, you can keep plan approval or both. So once you've decided that you're going to apply, uh, we need folks to determine if they're going to apply as a coalition or as a single organization. So um, unlike the Tech Hubs program, which um, is also out right now, we are not requiring folks for Recompete to apply as a coalition, known as a consortium for Tech Hubs, but you are free to apply as a coalition. However, if you are going to apply as a coalition, Please make sure all of your members of your coalition are one of our eligible entities. As you can see on the right, there's uh, seven eligible entities for this program. And you must determine which organization will serve as lead applicant, which is very important when we get into EDGE in a moment. If you are a single organization, again, you should make sure you're an eligible entity and it's important to know that you are the lead applicant. Something I want to note for those of you who are thinking about forming a coalition is we understand that your coalition membership may change between phase one and two. And uh, as you go into the EDGE process, please don't stress out about getting every single member of your coalition into EDGE. We really just need the lead applicant there. Um, but it is helpful to us if you can add your coalition. So step two um, is to register the lead applicant on SAM.gov. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, um, any applicant uh, to EDA needs to be registered in SAM.gov. Um, and by registering, you will receive a unique entity identifier, otherwise known as a UEI. Um, so please, please, if you haven't done this and you're a lead applicant, go to SAM.gov today to start the registration process. Critical. Once you've done that, you're ready to sign up for EDGE as a lead applicant. So I'm gonna take you through the steps right now to sign up for EDGE. So when you go to our Recompete Pilot uh, homepage on EDGE, you'll see a button that says Login. Please go ahead and click on that Login button to start signing up for EDGE. Once you go there, you'll be taken to a page that looks like this, and you're gonna to wanna to click Not a Member. And then the first thing you'll need to do is fill in your contact information. As a note, once you register, others in your organization are gonna be able to join your organization. So don't worry if you're the first person in your organization to join, there will be the opportunity for others. You're gonna to need to fill in your organizational information. Now, this is really important. If you are the lead applicant, as I just said, you are going to need your UEI in order to sign up, um, but you will not need your CAGE code from SAM.gov in order to sign up. You will, however, need your CAGE code if you're a recipient of an award. And then whether you're the lead applicant or not, you will need your tax ID number, also known as an EIN or employer identification number to sign up for EDGE. So please, if you don't know your tax ID number, work with your organization to identify that number. Once you've signed up for an account, you're ready to log in to your new account. So head to the Edge homepage and click log in. And sign in and now you are in, you are on our Edge portal. Now, some of you uh, are gonna be applying as coalitions and if you're gonna be applying as a coalition, uh, go to the upper right corner, click this little person icon, and click on My Association so you can create your coalition. This is not required if you are applying as a single applicant, only if you are applying as a coalition. So you're gonna click on My Associations. When you get there, you're gonna click 
add new association. And then it's going to ask you what type of association you are. Since this is recompete, you need to select coalition. The consortium option is for Tech Hubs or other programs. I want you to focus on coalition if you're applying to recompete, please. Then you're going to give your coalition a name. And then once you've created the coalition, uh, you're going to want to add member organization. Just a note, uh, adding a member organization does not mean that you're giving them access to your entire application. We're going to go over what it means to give other individuals access to the application in a moment. But this is how you indicate to us who are the members of your coalition. And as I said earlier, don't worry if it's difficult to add all your member organizations that you're applying with. Um, don't worry about that. You won't be disqualified if you miss one or two. Um, we just want to make sure that you're able to apply by creating a coalition if you are applying as a coalition. So if you're adding a member, you're going to click um, add a member. You'll have to use the email they use to sign up for EDGE and then they should receive an invite to apply. So now that you have uh, set up your coalition, if you're a coalition or logged in, if you're a lead applicant, you are ready to uh, start uh, your application by going to funding opportunities. So up on the top, you should see funding opportunities. You're going to want to select the Recompete Pilot Program Phase 1 opportunity. And then it's going to take you there and you're going to click apply now. And now this is very important. When you click apply now, it's going to give you the option to apply to strategy development or for recompete plan approval. Now, as we said earlier, some of you might be applying to both. If you're applying to both, you're going to select one here, start that application, and then go back and do the steps over again and start the recompete and approval application. These will be treated as two separate applications in our EDGE system. Once you select uh, which opportunity you're applying to, you're going to have to indicate if you're applying as a coalition. So if you are applying as a coalition, you select yes, and it should be able to identify the coalition you created earlier. And if you're just a single lead applicant, you can select no. You're going to enter a, a title for your project. And now you've started an application. So once you get into your application workspace, uh, we recommend that you should add members of your team who you need help need to be able to get into Edge to work on the application itself. So this might be um, someone else from your organization, for example, who's working on this application them to have access to this application, so you're going to go to application. Once you're an application team, you're going to see only yourself at the beginning. Uh, I added myself, I'm the lead applicant, so now I'm going to add a team member. So this team member is from my organization. We suggest that you start by adding folks from your organization, and then you have folks uh, who need to contribute in Edge from outside your organization. Moment. So I'm going to select yes and hit yet, hit next. I'm going to select team member. Please select team member here. We're going to go over what it means to select authorized representative in a little bit. Now, if they have not, uh, if they have registered for Edge, you're going to want to make sure to enter the email address that they use to set up their account, and this will uh, send them an invite to join your application. But if they have not registered for EDGE yet, you'll enter the email address that they want to use to set up their EDGE account, and this will send them an invite to join EDGE. So uh, once you add someone to your application, you're going to need to wait a little bit for EDA's team to approve the request, and then this individual will be able to access the application. So you should get something like this in your inbox. And then once you're done adding folks from your um, organization, you can add folks who are from outside your organization. So you'll go to add a team member and you'll select no. 
And then you'll be given the option to indicate whether they're a co-applicant or a third-party consultant. This is very important. Uh, co-applicant is not an option uh, under this program. Uh, so please select third-party consultant no matter who. If you're trying to add members of your coalition, uh, you can do that in the My Associates tab. So when you add someone from outside your organization, you need to enter their tax ID. This allows us to identify the organization. So as always, if you're having trouble finding your team member or with any of these steps, remember you can email grantHDsupport at eda.gov and we're here to support you. Now finally, before you can start working on all your documents, uh, you should add an authorized representative. The authorized representative is the only person who can submit the application once it's complete. So you're going to go back to application team. You're going to click add team member. You're going to select yes. The authorized representative should be from the lead applicant organization. And then you're going to select authorized representative. And you can enter the email of the authorized representative. Uh, please note that you need to do this even if the authorized representative is yourself. So you can enter your own email uh, that you use for your edge account, or you can enter the email of the authorized representative. Once you add them as an authorized representative, as you can see here, you're going to show up uh, twice, one as an applicant and one as a authorized representative. And now you're pretty much ready to rock in Edge. So you can click Get Started, and now we're going to take you through the documents that are going to be submitted in Edge in order to apply for this program. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, my colleague, Rachel Sun, Deputy Director of the Regional Program, who will take us from here. Perfect. Thanks, Leopold. And hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. We appreciate you taking the time today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, and just while I do a couple housekeeping notes, we will distribute these slides after this presentation. Just as a reminder, um, they'll be posted on our EDA Recompete website. So all of the steps that Leopold just walked us through will be just as accessible to you. Um, and then same thing with the recording of this specific webinar, we will also post the recording for folks that want to um, refresh. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, can you guys see this? Actually go into presentation mode. Okay. Great. So just following up on what Leopold mentioned, there are two sets of application requirements that we have for this program. One is the requirements for strategy development applications. The second is requirements for the recompete plan applications. So we'll talk through each of these forms over the next 10 minutes or so. And then I see a bunch of questions in the chat about EDGE specifically, so we'll come back to those too. For your strategy development awards, there are a set of requirements for all applicants, right? So no matter whether your applicant type or um, you know, the types of entities uh, involved in your application, you will need to fill out these forms that you see here on the page. An SF-424, letters of support, project narrative, your SF-424A, and your budget narrative, as well as your CD-511. Again, we'll talk through each of these in just a minute. And then for some applicants, so some of these will apply to you depending on your organization type or depending on the activities that you've participated in. Um, you have your SFLLL, your NICRA, your indirect cost rate documentation, your SPOC documentation, your organizational status, um, and then for nonprofits, we'll talk about a specific documentation that we need. So again, we'll go through all of these in a minute, but just sharing the full list for strategy development grants. Um, the other thing I'll say, we've put on our website two links that summarizes this list in more detail. So this first link, download the application checklist, click here, takes you to a table that lays out all of these requirements and a description of them, as well as where to find um, out whether or not they apply to you. And then the second link, download application documents, will help you download a zip file that includes templates for each of these where it's applicable. So highly recommend, you know, if this opportunity makes sense for you to go check out these two links, 
download the resources that are provided there and work through these almost like it's a workbook. Let's talk about recompete plan next. So for those of you who are applying for recompete plan approval, you'll see a smaller set of requirements, but still we'll just make sure you're going through each of these as you apply through EDGE. So one, letters of support, two, your project narrative, three, your budget narrative, and then your CD 511 required for all applicants. And then on the bottom half of the page, your SF LLL, um, your organizational status documentation, and then for nonprofits or public entities, um, we'll talk about that in just a minute as well. So just jumping into each of these, your letters of support, I won't dwell on this for too long. Um, you all probably have seen in the notice of funding opportunity right now, description of letters of support, what's required for this. So please do read through. Um, again, we'll just emphasize that we consider quality of letters more than sheer, uh, sheer volume. So um, please don't send us, you know, 100 and 150 standardized letters. Really, it's about what is um, included in them and how they'll support your recompute effort. One thing to note is if you are applying as a coalition, there should also be one letter from the coalition lead member that lays out that member's role, right? So just as a reminder for recompute, you can apply either as a coalition or an individual entity. Neither is more competitive than the other. But again, if you're applying as a coalition, please just include a letter that outlines um, the responsibilities of the coalition lead. Next, moving on. So the second required document is project narratives. Um, these differ in terms of what to include based on whether you're applying for strategy development grants or for your recompete plan approval. So just wanted to spend a minute talking about each. For strategy development grants, your project narrative should be no more than five pages. Um, it should discuss in detail the requirements that we talk about in the NOFO, so your selected geography of service, um, you know, what are the applicant types that are involved, things like that. It should talk about all of the evaluation criteria that we've copied onto the slide. And then most importantly, um, you know, the lot, last two bullets here, one, identifying the relevant geographic area um, that you're serving, and then two, the uses to which the applicants will put the funds if awarded. You'll see in the second to last bullet, we've put out a template to help you identify which areas are your service areas for the application. Um, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but we'd highly encourage you to use it just to out outline one, um, that you're working in an eligible area, and then two, that um, you've highlighted the specific service area within it. Moving on to recompete plans. So again, also requiring a project narrative for this application type um, I would just say that instead of five pages for this one, it's eight pages, right? So a bit more room. Um, and really the focus here is on the six key recompete plan elements that we talk about on pages 11 to 13 of the Notice of Funding Opportunity. Um, I can't see the chat right now, but if there are questions about these specific evaluation criteria, um, we'd encourage folks to check out the webinar that we hosted earlier in July that goes into depth on each of these. So um, we can maybe put the link in the chat, but we have a separate webinar and recording and slides that talk about kind of programmatic goals um, and how to think about each of these criteria as well. Lastly, uh, similar to in stra uh, strategy development grants, we also encourage you here to discuss the relevant eligible geographic area that you're focused on, as well as the service area using the template um, that's linked here. Just clicking one more step further, so this is the template that I just mentioned. Um, it's called the Eligible Area Slash Service Area Template. Again, not required, but highly recommended for both. So what you'll see in this template online, there are two main tabs that we need you to fill out. So the first tab is called the Eligible Area List. What we'd like for folks to do with this tab is just look at the uh, Recompete Eligibility Mapping Tool, so the map and um, to highlight those areas that the map shows us eligible for this program and put them into this Excel. So this is just a gut check to say, hey, yes, we're confirming that we're doing work within an eligible area as defined by our statutory formula. And then the second tab is called the service areas list. And so um, what we encourage applicants to do with this tab is to say, hey, you know, I might be sitting within an eligible area, but my service area specifically are XYZ places. So the second tab is just for you to show us um, what are the specific geographic areas in which the work will benefit 
the people in that area. For some of you, that may be the same exact geography as your eligible area. So say you're a county that's eligible and you want to serve the entire county with this work, that's great. Just um, put that same information there. For others, you may say, actually, my service area is a subset of an eligible area. So maybe instead of serving the entirety of the county, I want to focus on specific census tracts within it, or I want to focus on a specific part that's smaller than the whole. So again, just include on that tab for us, you know, what is the specific service area that you're focusing on? Okay, moving along. So the last one that is required for both uh, applications are your budget narratives. So for your strategy development grant, and this will feel quite similar to other EDA programs if you have applied to them, just please clearly identify and justify how each um, line item requested in the budget will be used to support the proposed project. We've included a template for you in this slide deck and online as well. And then for recompete plan applicants, so there's a separate Excel template that's called High Level Recompete Plan Budget Narrative. It's linked here as well as in the NOFO and on our website. So please just make sure, um, you know, if you're applying to one, one option or the other, just make sure you're using the right template for these. But um, for the recompete plan, it'll ask you to identify three to eight proposed projects that you would submit if you were moved on to phase two. And this template will also ask for high level budget estimates for each of these projects. Um, more detail can be found on the NOFO about this, but we anticipate in phase two making awards averaging between $20 million and $50 million. That being said, you know, if you're a community that says, hey, actually, I think um, my implementation projects might total to less than $20 million, for example, that's totally okay, um, does not need to be at least 20. Um, and then finally, in terms of forms that are required for both application options, the last one is the CB 511. So um, just a lobbying certification, pretty standard if you've applied to EDA funding before. Um, this form, you know, again, linked online, but just certifies that you will comply with lobbying requirements. Um, jumping along now, we'll focus on forms that are either specific to different options to apply. So. Uh, the SF-424 is just a form that is required for if you are applying to strategy development grants. If you're only applying to recompete plans, don't worry about this, but for our strategy development grant applicants, this is um, outlining kind of your organizational information. It's required by our grant circulations. So please do reach out if you need help filling this out. Um, your local economic development representatives can help you with this, as can our EDA program team here at um, recompete. The next one is similarly the SF-424A, so this is your budget for non-construction programs, breaks down the budget in a little bit more detail. Again, required, but only if you're applying for the strategy development grants, not for recompete plan approval. Moving along, uh, this form is relevant for both funding opportunities, both strategy development and recompete plan approval, but it will only apply to you if you have lobbying activities that you would like to disclose or that you need to disclose, I should say. So your SFLLL, um, again, make sure you're tracking this if you're applying to either of the options, but just um, may not apply to all applicants. This is another one. So depending on the type of organization that is applying, um, and again, applicable to both recompete plan and strategy development applicants, we may require some documentation of your organizational status. So um, for some applicant types, you may not need to provide documentation. For others, you may. Um, so as you see on the right, if you are a nonprofit organization, if you are a for-profit tribal entity, and then other types of entities that we've listed on our eligible applicants FAQ, um, we would encourage you to include the following documents when you apply. So those are one, your articles of incorporation, two, bylaws, three, your certificate of good standing, um, or four, if uh, for some reason you don't have one of these three, equivalent documentation. And so uh, one thing I'll note here is it's not required for you to submit these when you apply, but we will need them to um, eventually confirm the status of your organization. So if you have them, encourage you to include them in your original submission, and EDA may just reach out afterward to help verify. And finally, the last two. So uh, these are applicable only if you're applying for strategy development grants. Uh, your first is if you have a NICRA, please include it in your application. Um, if you don't, don't worry about it. 
And then the second is your state point of contact. Um, we have more information on the NOFO for page 23 on if this applies to you. Again, only applicable to strategy development grants. If you're focused on your compete plans, don't worry about these. Okay, um, I know this is a lot and I know that federal grants can be overwhelming for um, a lot of us. And so please, we are here to support you. If you have questions, um, I know we have a bunch in the chat so we can go through those now, but just reach out to the Recompete program office at recompete at eda.gov. Um, we are looking at the inbox every day, trying to get back to you guys as soon as possible whenever you're ready to apply. The other thing I'll say is um, each of you should have a local economic development representative through EDA, which you can find on our EDA webpage, contact us, and they're excellent resources to help you navigate the funding process for these major programs. And then lastly, please do sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media, and we'll make sure to update you all with additional resources, questions, updates as we go along um, for those of you interested in applying for this program. Great, um, I'll go ahead and pause there and stop sharing my screen. Leopold, I don't know if you saw additional questions that make sense for us to elevate from the Q&A that we might wanna cover. Yeah, I see one from Jim here. Um, if you have already have a recompete plan that would be requested for approval, then why apply for a strategy development grant? In other words, if we are applying for a strategy development grant, uh, then how can we submit a plan that you haven't developed yet. So I, I think the best way to address this question is um, we understand that when folks apply under the recompete plan approval, um, that they might have really excellent ideas as to the type of investments that might be required to reduce the prime age employment gap in their community, but they would uh, benefit from funds that would allow them to build capacity in the period from phase one to phase two to uh, engage in activities that might help them uh, get a little bit further into the planning of how they would execute on these ideas. And so we defer to you. If you feel that you have the resources necessary to take that uh, vision uh, into phase two, uh, then don't apply for a strategy development grant. But if you think you benefit from it, then we uh, encourage you to apply for a planning award. Rachel, anything you would add? No, I think that's right. We know everyone is at different parts of um, the journey in terms of developing a regional plan. And, you know, part of the program was designed so that we can get capital out the door as quickly as possible to our communities, which is why the timeline is a bit fast. But um, if you do need funding, please do apply for the strategy development grant option. Um, maybe the only other thing odd is for those that do move on to phase two, uh, we'll provide four months or so of technical assistance to help you develop out those applications. Sarah asked, um, will you need to submit on edge and on grants.gov? Um, no, the answer is no. You only need to submit through our edge portal. And then um, another question, are we disqualified if we submitted an application to EPA for another competition? Um, absolutely not. We certainly encourage those who have submitted previous EDA competitions uh, to apply. Um, of course, there will be no preference to Previous EDA applicants, current grantees, or those who have never applied to EDA before, we welcome everyone. I think Jennifer had a great question. I just wanna elevate for the team. So um, the question is, Leo, what's the difference between association members and the application team in EDGE? Like, why would you want to register in someone in one versus the other, or both given for limited access to the grant application? So Leo, I don't know if you wanna just share what you wrote back to Jennifer so folks know too. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's pretend Rachel and I are applying as a coalition to recompete. Uh, Rachel uh, is a profit that I'm working with, and I represent uh, my state government. So I'm going to be the lead applicant. Uh, so I'm going to go into EDGE and create an application. Um, and then to add Rachel's nonprofit as a member of my coalition, I'll go into my assistant that, that they're uh, part of my coalition. However, uh, I don't really need Rachel to help with the forms or any of the uh, application materials in, in the EDGE platform. So when I go to my team, um, I'm not going to invite Rachel there to join the team the application. Um, but there is a, another uh, fellow at my organization at the state government who needs to help uh, develop the materials in EDGE. So I'm going to send them an invite there to join the team working in EDGE on the application. So it's really important to distinguish between these two things. 
My associations is where you just indicate who are the other organizations that are in your coalition. If you are applying as a coalition, remember you don't even have to go there if you're applying just as an organization. And then application team is where you uh, invite individuals who need to get into EDGE and work on the application on the EDGE platform. Great question. Thanks, Leo. Um, I'm seeing a few questions about where folks need to have the cage and where folks need to have the UEI. Can you just say a little bit more? Um, specifically, the question is, do you need the cage in order to apply or just the UEI? Yeah, so as a reminder, the lead applicant um, is the only one who needs either a UEI or a cage uh, in order to apply. You only need the UEI to register on EDGE, um, but you would need a cage code if you are selected for an award. So if you do not have a UEI yet because you haven't registered on SAM.gov, we really encourage you after this call, go on SAM.gov and register. It can take a little while, so please go ahead and register on SAM.gov. Um, and we're available um, to answer any questions box or any questions about that. But just to summarize, you only need a UEI to sign up for EDGE if you're the lead applicant. You would need a CAGE code if you were selected for an award, but you do not need a CAGE code to sign up for EDGE. I've seen this question a couple of times. Is it necessary to have a team? Is there a preference given to someone who applies as a coalition? Uh, no. We, we do not show any preference if you apply as a coalition or as a single applicant. However, uh, we do expect you to show in your application that you have uh, really strong partnerships with folks in your community that will help you execute on your plan. So you might have partners who are not formally applying with you as a member of a coalition, but we would expect to see letters from those partners and that they are uh, part of this initiative and committed to it. So there will be no preference uh, if you apply as a coalition or if you, if you apply as an individual entity. I'm seeing a few questions. Just um, I'd also remind folks, I think what's most helpful in the notice of funding opportunity is if you guys take a look at um, the evaluation criteria. So both strategy development grants and recompete plans have separate evaluation criteria. Um, and so I think those are a really helpful resource to understand what will applications be evaluated against. So I, I definitely check out the sections of the notice of funding opportunity. Um, the other thing I should say is in our webinar that we did earlier this year, uh, the recording on our webpage, we went through each of the evaluation criteria in more detail. So if folks have questions about, hey, is this gonna make me more or less competitive, would definitely recommend you check that out if you haven't already. Um, I do want to clarify, see a question from Jim, just re-clarifying the two options for phase one. So again, option one, apply for strategy development grant, that's tied to funding. You're able to get grants between $250,000 to $750,000. Great opportunity to get funding to build the capacity of your region. And so those grants are an option that you can apply for through this process in phase one. However, just applying for that option won't get you um, considered for phase two. So if you're interested in eventually applying for major implementation dollars, um, you want to make sure you're applying to the recompete plan approval option as well. So what recompete a plan approval is, is it's the eight pager that we talked about. This doesn't have funding attached, but it's the gate to phase two of the competition. So again, if folks are interested in the 20 million to $50 million um, that will award through the entirety of the program, definitely make sure you're applying for faith for option two, recompete plan approval. And then lastly, of course, you can apply to both, right? So um, you might say, hey, I need planning dollars for my community, but I also want to be considered for phase two. So that would be a scenario in which you're applying for both options. Great questions, keep them coming. Um, let's see. So can an applicant be as small as a community-based organization? And sure, um, as long as you're one of the eligible entities, I would assume community-based organization, nonprofit, uh, you can apply. Of course, we would uh, want to feel confident that you have the capacity to execute on this award and on your vision. Um, and so we just want to make sure that you have uh, the capacity to implement the projects that you forward. 
Uh, one thing I just want to point out about nonprofits who are applying is that they must be acting in cooperation with a political subdivision of a state, which means simply that you need to get a letter uh, from the local government uh, and submit as part of your application. Um, let's keep going. Focus on a city only that is eligible. Uh, so yeah, if you uh, go to our map on our website and you see that your city uh, is eligible, you are free to focus on that city. And we would also encourage you to identify a service area within that city uh, that you might focus on. We know that some cities have pockets where uh, many folks are employed, while other communities and cities have high primary employment gaps. And we want you to really take a targeted geographic approach to reach those folks who are, you know, being left out to ensure that they can connect to high quality jobs. I'm seeing a question around um, the clarifying the strategy development grant money. So. Uh, Joseph's asking, can the strategy development grant money be used for general capacity building outside of the Recompete program? Um, I think what we would say is, you know, the Recompete program is focused on closing the prime age employment gap. And so thinking about how do we create jobs and connect people to those jobs. So um, I would think about those dollars in the context of that objective. But if you look at the notice of funding opportunity, we also lay out the types of activities that the strategy development funding can be used for, and it is intentionally quite flexible and quite broad. So um, definitely can be used for, you know, capacity building in that sense. And please just reach out to our inbox if you have additional questions on what could be used um, as in scope versus out of scope too. Rachel, I think I'm going to take a quick moment to take folks through our homepage and the resources that are there. Um, I think this might be helpful based on some of the questions I'm seeing. So let me just share my screen really. You see this, Rachel? Yes, it's showing up. Great. So if you go to eda.gov slash recompete, it will take you to this page. And what we encourage you to do is to scroll down to the bottom. And here we have a bunch of resources. So the very first section is critical. These are the application uh, essentials. So there's a notice of funding opportunity. You're going to want to read that very carefully if you plan on applying to this program. There's the application checklist that we referenced earlier. This includes all the things that you're going to need in order to submit an application. There's our frequently asked questions. Uh, many of the questions that are being asked today are covered in these frequently asked questions. We also update them regularly based on what we're getting from our inbox and from forums like this. So please make sure to check those FAQs. There's a link to our map where you can check your geographic eligibility. There's a zip file link where you can download all the documents you need in order to apply. And then finally here, there's a link to our EDGE portal where you would submit those documents. Under that, we have a few templates that we referenced today that are uh, highly recommended. Please use these um, in submitting your application. So first we have that eligible area and service area template that you can download uh, and submit with your application your eligible area and then the service area you will focus on. And then we have the budget template for strategy development and we have a budget template for plan approval. And these are slightly different templates, so make sure you the right one for the right application. And then we have this section, applicant guides and videos. This is where you'll find the video of today's webinar and the slides from today's webinar. Uh, we also have fact sheets in English and Spanish. And then I wanted to highlight these three uh, resources uh, real quick. So we put out three guides that might help you as you're thinking about an application. The first guide is a uh, illustrative implementation investments guide, which will take you through some of the investments that you might imagine using uh, Recompete uh, implementation dollars for. Now, I want to emphasize that these uh, examples are examples. Uh, they're not meant to be prescriptive. We know that every community is different and is going to require different types of investments in order to help folks who are unemployed or out of the labor force. Um, so make sure to remember that. But we did think that providing some examples might be helpful uh, to those of you who are trying to envision what, what would I do with 20 or $50 million in my community to address the prime age employment gap. So definitely take advantage of this resource. 
We also have a menu of community commitments. So we really want you to think about how you can bring employers and other partners to the table to make commitments towards uh, this initiative that you're putting together to reduce the primage employment gap. So we have some commitments that you might consider here. And then we have a, a fact sheet that provides additional funding opportunities. We know that Recompete um, is not the only amazing opportunity out there right now, and we want to help you guys identify all the different uh, fantastic opportunities that you might apply to. So I just wanted to highlight those, and again, those are available here. And then finally, we have some other uh, resources at the bottom of the But please, please go to eda.gov slash Recompete and go through each of these links carefully uh, if you're considering applying to the program. And Leo, while you have this up, can you actually open the note, notice of funding opportunity or the NOFO? And I just know I've seen a few questions about criteria. On page 25, if you can jump to that. Um, sorry, I know this NOFO is very long for all of us. So on page 25, um, folks can see the evaluation criteria that we were mentioning earlier. So your strategy development grants, there's four criteria weighted about the same. And then the bottom half of the page, the recompete plan approval, six different criteria. Um, earlier in the document, it discusses each of these in detail. So definitely recommend folks check those out. Um, and again, the focus of one of the other webinars that we've done too. Seeing a few questions. I think I'm seeing a few questions around, um, you know, maybe we're not ready today or by October 5th to apply. Um, for implementation funding, you know, our community needs a bit more time to develop their plan. Uh, will there be additional opportunities to apply, for example, next year um, for the major implementation dollars? So um, to take a step back, Congress was able to appropriate us $200 million this year for implementation through this pilot program, which we're very excited about. So um, what we're currently appropriated for is going to be deployed through the two-phase process that we've laid out. I would say if you have an idea that even you're thinking about to be ready for implementation dollars, I'd encourage folks to submit it now. Um, but we unfortunately um, are hoping to, you know, get a higher amount of dollars appropriated in the future for additional rounds of this. But we are, um, you know, currently planning to work with the 200 million that we have today. I'm seeing some questions in the chat about letters. Um, do I need to get letters from everyone in my county? Things like that. One thing we want to emphasize is that we're looking for a quality over quantity of letters. Uh, we know that an October 5th uh, deadline is honestly soon. We're looking for you to bring together the letters from those who matter, those who are really part of this initiative, who are committed to working with you, and are making commitments. So if you, please don't feel the need to get a letter from everyone. Uh, bring us your you know, letters that are high quality, that show commitment to your vision and your uh, application. So someone wrote, do you have to identify a minimum of three projects for phase two? Um, we encourage folks to identify three to eight projects for phase two. Uh, one thing that uh, we will do uh, between phase one and phase two is uh, support those who have with, had recompete plan approval, uh, think through you know, what it might mean to develop three to eight pro projects. So um, that's important to note. I'm seeing a few more questions around, um, hey, how should I prove support with my state or with my local government? So um, again, as you guys may have seen in the statute, one of the eligible entity types says nonprofit in cooperation with a subdivision of a state entity or a political subdivision of a state. So all to say, if you are a nonprofit, um, what we would ask is when you apply, please include a letter of support um, from either your state government, your county government, your local government, some political entity, and that will count as your in cooperation with um, requirement, if you will. And so we have an FAQ on this up on our website uh, under eligible entities if folks want more information, but please do reach out if you have questions on this. I know it's a little bit um, complex. One more thing I just want to highlight, some people are writing in the chat that the census tract viewer um, is a little bit difficult for them to navigate. 
What I recommend is if you're having trouble looking up your geography, send us an email at recompete.eda.gov with the geography you're trying to check, and I personally will check for you and, and send you screenshots to help you understand your eligibility. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Maybe on that same thread, and just as we're wrapping up with time, um, if you all do have questions and just need clarification or someone to walk you guys through things, please do reach out to recompete.eda.gov. Um, one of us will hop on the phone with you. The other resource is, of course, your local economic development representative. Um, I will try to find the link and put it in the chat before we wrap up, but just please do reach out to your EDRs. They um, know grants applications in and out. They can help you with what is an SF424, how do I think about my SF LL, all of that stuff, right? So um, we are here to support you. We know this is a complex program and hoping that um, we can be a good resource as you all begin to apply. Let's take maybe a few more questions from Megan. If you expect some things to change between um, phase one and phase two, how long do you have for phase one? So um, we expect to make award announcements for phase one this winter. So um, in the next few months, once applications close, then following that we haven't yet put out a timeline for the phase two deadline but the phase two notice of funding opportunity would go out the same time that we award the phase one strategy development grants as well as announce the finalists um, and then in terms of the actual grant period so if you applied in phase one to a strategy development grant um, the period of performance for those will be between 18 and 36 months and so um, we expect recipients of those grants who also move on to phase two through recompete plan approval to be able to use some of those funds to prepare for phase two, but also to use them um, beyond the open competition period. So one more question I'm seeing here, are all tribal communities eligible? Um, yes, tribal geographies are eligible. Of course, you would need to be eligible entity in order to apply and tribal governments are an eligible entity for uh, tribal communities to apply for this opportunity. Great questions, everyone. Please keep them coming. What we'll do too is we'll share this video. We'll also take another look at the chat and see if um, there are other questions that we didn't get to today that came up commonly and put them up on our FAQs, which um, we update pretty frequently. And then if we don't cover your question, then please do just reach out through the inbox and we will get a response back to you. Awesome. Um, labeled anything else that you wanted to cover today? No, um, just as Rachel said, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we really want to reduce the barrier for entry of this program, so we welcome feedback. Um, again, it's recompete at eda.gov, and I'll be sure to email those who attended today with all the reasons for reference. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you apply.